Today's sponsor is 3D Bear, an amazing augmented reality programming app for the classroom. Join us next Wednesday, December 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern for the Teaching with Augmented Reality webinar. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn how to register. Episode 402, 3D printing in a STEM classroom. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So when I travel and go to conferences, I always like to attend the conference. This past summer, 2018, I was in Akron, Ohio speaking, and I went to a 3D printing session because I will admit it. Sometimes I struggle with my 3D printer and I came across an amazing presenter, seventh grade STEM teacher in Ohio, David Turnit. So Dave, tell us a little bit about how you're using the 3D printer in your classroom. Oh my gosh, the question almost becomes, how do you not use this 3D printer in your classroom? We use it for prototyping. Kids create houses and sketch up. Uh, which is a architectural program, and th- we can print that out. So my students print phone cases. They also have characters that they have thought of for plays or drawings that they've made, and they create them in virtual reality. Uh, they sculpt them in Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, and then they then we can print those out also. Okay, so this is a whole lot to unpack. Now, first of all, how many 3D printers do you have? In our current rooms, I teach with eighth grade also. We kind of team teach a little bit. We have three printers all together. So we have two Maker Gear printers and one that is a dual extruder. So you can print it in two colors at one time. Let's just kind of dig through these. First of all, prototyping. What are some things that you have prototyped lately? Lately, they've done drones. They've printed out mini drones that you can attach little motors to. Uh, we've even put cameras on on those drones, and they are able to fly them using um, some VR goggles. Wow. Are you finding plans for these, or you're creating them from scratch? Somewhat scratch, but we've also used um, Instructables.com, which is a great site for a lot of different types of projects, and also doing some really cool Google searches. Okay, so you're finding out how to do this. You're finding the stuff at Instructables. And what software are they using to design these drones? Are they just downloading the plans and then print? No, they they design them in um, Onshape, which is a cloud-based 3D modeling program. Uh, We also use uh, SolidWorks. And uh, the students just start mod after they've gone through the introduction, like the tutorials on how to use this software. Um, they are able to um, model their own drones or phone cases or whatever. Cool. OK. Second thing you mentioned was houses in SketchUp. So Google SketchUp is free, right? And they're modeling houses and then you're printing them. How are you? How do you do that? Um, you just uh, you down, you have to put an extension onto SketchUp, which is uh, export an STL file. And once you do that, you can just download an STL. And most most 3D printer software uh, can read an STL file. OK, so they're modeling these houses and then they're printing them out. How are you what are you doing with them? They use them basically as a model to have. They also make them to scale. So whenever like I had this one student, she just did a tiny house. And it was really cool because she separated all the different floors. So each floor is a different model. And then she's able to print them out and then she interlocks them together. Uh, She also made it to scale. So the students are learning a lot of math and all kinds of like measuring and ratios. And it is it really starts to get crazy what they they do with this. Okay, so you said that you let the kids print phone cases. Now, that's one of the things people say is, you know, the supplies can be expensive. This filament can be expensive, depending on what you're doing. Do they do they contribute for the filament? You just let them print it out and take it home and say, okay, this is meaningful. How does that work? I do have a a fee that they have to pay for STEM class. I think it's like a dollar, but for each student. So we have all students going through our classroom. So um, the filament's pretty cheap. So like a regular phone case, you can, with the filament, you can print it out. And it's usually uh, ends up being like 75 cents whenever you print it out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so super cheap. 
Wow. Okay, so let's talk about this this virtual reality. You have kids designing an Oculus Rift and then printing it out. Now that's going to blow some people's minds. So let's break it down in simple terms of what you're saying here. So there's a couple of different types of programs that you can use. Uh, one of the more famous ones um, is Tilt Brush uh, by Google. Uh, there's also Blocks, uh, which basically is what it says. You just put different blocks together to make shapes. Kind of looks like a Minecraft whenever you're done with it, like something that should belong in Minecraft. There's also a new, we just found a new one called Gravity Sketch, which is really nice. But these these different programs you can uh, sketch in virtual space. It's, it's, it's basically, man, if you think about sketching on your computer screen and then being able to walk into your computer screen, it's really, really cool. So the students can literally walk around their creation. So you have to think three-dimensionally. Okay, so they're they're putting on VR glasses. They're running one of these programs. Yep. They're, I guess, designing with their hands in VR because their VR glasses are seeing their hands. Is that kind of right? Yep. They have the controllers, which uh-huh. depends on the program, actually look like hands. <laughs> they're able to uh, just sculpt or pick whatever they want to use. Okay, so once they sculpt or create whatever it is, you're able to export that as an STL file and print it? Yep. Either that or some different format. Sometimes it comes off. There's there's a bunch of different kinds of file formats that you can use for 3D printing. Um, STL is one. There's another one called an OBJ file. Uh, So we've downloaded them in that also. But it's pretty common to have STL or OBJ or, you know, there's there's a bunch of them that you could find. You have three 3D printers. How many kids are in your class? Usually an average class is around 22, 20, somewhere in there. Sometimes a little less, sometimes. So how do you balance print time and students and make it so that everybody, you know, has has time on these printers? Oddly enough, we've never really had that problem because all the students are at different stages of their project. Um, Some students like zip through it fast and they're the first ones on the 3D printer. And then the other ones come through. Because after they print their models, they always have to redesign it, which is a really fun project for me to watch because I get to see them evaluate what came out and then can they make it better? Do they need to make some changes? So they have to re-engineer their prototype. Would you say in your STEM classes that most of the time is spent with the 3D printers? Are you doing other things too? No, they're doing other things. Actually, a really small amount is spent with the 3D printers. Most of the time, they're either learning how to use the software or measuring and calculating and using all kinds of math to try to figure this stuff out. Mostly it's, it's modeling, like getting their models ready to print. So if, if somebody's starting off with a STEM program and 3D printers, what are some mistakes they should watch out for? If your students have not had any, or and you have not really had any, um, in, have not had any contact with any kind of 3D modeling software, you want to really start basic, even though you think it might be too basic. It's really not. So like I would recommend that if somebody is starting off with make sure you get a good printer, something that isn't just like a couple hundred bucks, but something that is probably over um, a thousand or so. And then getting used to 3D modeling, like using Tinkercad is a really good one uh, to start off with. And and uh, just learning how how 3D modeling actually works. When somebody comes to you, besides just the student engagement and excitement about having these 3D printers, what are the things that you would tell teachers that you teach in terms of standards? Well, of course, all the technology standards. Then we get into a lot of math standards. They're also, my goodness, there's a, it, it's a ton of standards. A STEM right now in Ohio doesn't really have standards. We just mostly use the tech standards and they hit pretty much all of those. Where do you tell people to get started? What is a great project to start with your students if you're kind of, okay, I'm ready, I need to do this, but I'm a little nervous? I would just say go through to go through a couple of tutorials like how to make a boat or how to make, you know, pick pick a fun shape that you want to make, pick a fun model like an airplane, something simple, even if it's a little cartoonish. And look it up on YouTube. That's one of the big things is we get a lot of our tutorials from YouTube or instructables.com is a really good place that you can find really easy to follow tutorials that are really simple to follow. 
Okay, teachers, so 3D printing is not just a novelty anymore, and there's so many amazing things you can do with it, it computational thinking, math skills, STEM, uh, project-based learning, collaboration. I mean, we could go on and on, and I'll admit that the 3D printers have been a challenge for me. When I saw what Dave was doing this summer, I was inspired, and I was like, okay, this is possible, this is doable. And a lot of the frustrations from the early days of 3D printing, I think, are being mitigated or, or limited just with the ability of the 3D printers to be more reliable and just all the pieces of software we can use now, which uh, I did not know, Dave, that we can design for our 3D printer in virtual tools. 3D Bear is a fun augmented reality app for the classroom. It links together augmented reality and me and my students. Augmented reality is a new tool for the classroom and needs new pedagogies. Join us Wednesday night, December 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern as I co-moderate a panel of augmented reality teacher enthusiasts as we discuss the pedagogies of augmented reality in the classroom. To register, go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash AR webinar and join us. Also, stay tuned for a blog post review of 3D Bear on the Cool Cat Teacher blog. So again, you can register at coolcatteacher.com forward slash AR webinar. It's going to be fun. I hope you can join us. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.